to get all of our stuff out of this trailer. It's going to be uh, last time we haul this. Welcome back to the channel. It's Nola Trucking, and I'm Matt. And we are heading towards our next pickup. So this one's going to be a drop and hook. We've had this trailer for what did you say, six months? Yeah, about six months. We treated it like it was our own, but it's time to leave it behind. Um, so Landstar does not like to do preventative maintenance. Their only obligation is to fix things that uh, will not pass a free trip or an inspection. So things like the alignment being bad, uh, they don't care to fix that until it's so bad that it wears through a tire and then they need to replace the tire, but they don't do an alignment. Ever. So uh, this this trailer is, is needing a little bit of love and uh, they don't want to put the money into it so uh, we have decided to open ourselves up for dropping hooks now uh, being that the market is shifting a little more towards the uh, customer side so we can't be as selective as we were before yeah you like that selective not picky selective uh, so we're starting to do a lot more of the things that we uh, didn't need to do or didn't want to do before. Uh, but drop notes are, are not bad, actually. Um, this one is for an agency that we've we've done some work for a while back before we got this trailer and, and stopped doing drop notes altogether. Uh, they had pretty good freight in some of the markets that we were going to that were a little light on freight, and they would call us uh, offering the load when we got to Utah to go back to, I don't even remember where it was going, like Oklahoma, Kansas, yeah. Uh, so we're doing a, I believe it's Saya to Saya, uh, but it's on a Landsar trailer. It's going to be preloaded. It's a drop and hook. It is a solo run, but it's kind of a deliver whenever. So uh, we take those when they have a wide window and we run them as much of a team as we want to. So we get them there a lot earlier than a solo driver could, but not as fast as uh, the teams that are running the truck 24 seven. Uh, so kind of in between, and then we have something booked after it as well. So we need to, uh, we're about 37 miles away from the pickup, but it picks up tomorrow. We didn't want to kind of schedule it too close uh, because a lot of those, those runs that we take from this particular agency pick up in the middle of the night and you kind of like run through the night but uh, this one is not being that it's a solar driver load uh, so we just kind of wanted that day in between to you know get laundry done uh, take our time to get over to the pickup you know we had to take everything out of the trailer as you saw uh, we did a little time lapse of that so we had to take all the straps the cargo net down you know we rolled them up and uh, secured them so I don't know, maybe after the dust settles, maybe in a few loads, um, I don't know, we might find a good 
brand new trailer and, and uh, keep that one as our own for another six months. But until we know what we're doing with the trailer, we're gonna keep the uh, straps in the truck and not in the trailer. It's a lot of work to like take them out all the time. So there's no use of like putting them up on the wall if we're only gonna have the trailer for like one or two loads. So we're gonna get over to uh, Carlisle. Probably gonna stop at the Petro for the night and we'll pick up in the morning. This is the last time we're hauling that other trailer. It was uh, pretty well maintained, rode decent, Start the quality started slipping a little bit, but uh, did us pretty well. I mean, we broke off the airline at the uh, brake chamber with that tire casing, but that got fixed and everything was good. Uh, but we put ourselves back in the rotation for dropping hooks. Um, there's some loads that we wanted to run that are dropping hooks, uh, some freight that we we like to uh, to pick up in some of the areas that don't have the best uh, choices for freight. So we just went ahead and did it. Um, so in the next few weeks, days, months, whatever, uh, we're going to be in what I like to call trailer roulette. So when you do a drop and hook, it's like a Russian roulette if you're going to get a horribly maintained trailer or if you're going to get a good one, like a new one that doesn't have any problems, you can hook up and go. Um, so we are officially in trailer roulette when we get done with this. Um, it's kind of sad to see that trailer go, but we got to do what we got to do to continue to make good money and you know like some of the drop and hook loads uh, they're really really profitable and they're more team-esque which is good um, you know we, we like to like to have a mix we have we like to have the option of running hard when we want to and then kind of taking it easy doing like super solo ish stuff uh, when you know when when we feel fit that's why we didn't do well with a dispatcher uh, when we were at prime because they'll only go along with your plan for so long until it becomes an inconvenience and then you turn into the problem child according to them so um, you know it, it is what it is we we just had to get out of the company that dispatched um, and so onto a load board that we can dispatch ourselves because then we can do whatever we want at, at the time and we don't have to explain it to another person why we're tired or we need a day off or any any reason like that but uh, this particular load here is a solo driver load but it has the caveat of being able to be delivered uh, whenever you get there pretty much um, so this is Saya to Saya, I believe. It is loaded on a Landstar trailer. Uh, so we are going to try to get it there tomorrow. And then we have another load lined up after it. Um, and we're also going to try to take a, an interesting route around a lot of the tolls. I don't know how well it's going to work, but we'll see. Alright, so we're going left here, right? Yeah, we gotta get this down. Um, this, the company that, that does these loads, 
the well, sorry the agency that does these loads they always say uh, it ranges from 2,000 pounds up to 42,000 pounds but did you not close the door well some some uh, some things shifted back there around that corner uh, yeah this uh, this agency always posts that it could be this like wide range of weights but uh, I don't think we have ever gotten any that are like that light so this one the paperwork says something somewhere around 39 um, our gauge our drive gauge is sitting excuse me is sitting at like 30 so we'll see we're gonna scale it just for peace of mind's sake emergency lane pops on for a second and turns off what's that oh there it is I was looking at the uh, side of the pumps Yeah, so the gauge right now is showing 39. So we'll see what the uh, the trailer's at. And what's that? Or, uh, 29. Yeah, not 39. Yeah, we have had the other trailer for quite a while. We gotta do some uh, some tandem moving. We're at uh, 28 and 37, so we'll get that uh, we'll get that balanced out. And we need yeah. I mean it's legal. We just gotta shift it around. So we're gonna come over here out of the way, do a little trailer sliding, get back over for a reway. Nice little spot right here. Right. I guess this is the problem when you have an LTL company load a uh, 53 foot trailer. Alright, let's get down here, pull the pins. again see what it's at go from there well we got it balanced uh, we are a lot farther back than I like to be we are not nimble <laughs> the uh, trailer takes a mile and a half to track where you want it to go but uh, we checked the bridge laws where we're going and we are good uh, it's just not gonna be a ton of fun but luckily we only have to do this for a day they loaded this very weird but like I said that's what you get when you pick up from an LTL company they don't really care what is weight distribution 
who cares? Yeah, I don't really care for this uh, truck stop. It's uh, very busy. And then JB Hunt was sliding tandems in the lane for the scale. And then it cleared up, so he got back in his truck. And I was like, oh, cool, he's going to pull forward and get on scale. Nope. He goes to slide his tandems again as I'm in mid turn, like blocking the, uh, the lane because you got to cut over the lane if you're going to reway, uh, like the entrance. And then my man just goes all the way through, doesn't even scale. Like, this is awesome. Love it. Right turn signal. Uh oh, TMC got him a, a truck wash. Looks good. Black trucks look very good when they roll out of the uh, wash bay. And that's about it. Because if you look at it wrong, hey, that sheet's over there. There are a bunch of trucks. I told you, if a truck fits, it's truck parking, right? <laughs> All right, we're gonna get down the road a little bit and then uh, probably film a little bit more in a, in a bit. We are currently on 94 West, uh, about 100 miles away from our uh, delivery. It is gonna be a drop hook, so uh, it was due in tomorrow or the following day, I can't remember which, but we're gonna get it in today, pick up a trailer, hopefully it's good, doesn't need a, a ton of repairs. And we're gonna get over to a truck stop, get some sleep, and uh, uh, get over to our pickup tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, it's about uh, I think it's less than 60 miles away. The truck stop is gonna be about 35 miles away from our delivery today, so it shouldn't be too bad. And then. Uh, Yesterday stopped uh, late last night at that uh, rest area that, uh, that we showed the other a few videos ago. The large rest area in uh, Indiana. Found a spot. Uh, it was pretty peaceful, you know, nothing of note. And uh, yeah, we just took out this morning, got rain running, and uh, she ran all day. I gotta finish up the rest. There was about 150 miles left on the, the total trip. Should be at Saya. Well, just went and checked in, told us to drop it in the middle, and then the uh, empties are along the fence. I saw at least one, so we'll leave out of here with a trailer, but it's not as like, it's a pretty old one, so hopefully it's in decent shape though. Uh, we'll see. Let's see where we're gonna drop this.
one looks like. I guess Liz will pick which one she likes the best. And that's what we'll hook up to. Drop the landing gear, pulled the uh, release, took the airlines off. Now I'm just letting the bag settle so we can pull out from under it. Hmm. But I got a low enough. But... All right. Uh, I think we're still deciding which trailer we want to go for. There are four total. So the newest one has some terrible looking tires. One of the trailers has eight new recaps. Uh, both of them don't have a current 120 day inspection, but uh, not super worried about that. If it's not over a year, they don't put you on hold. So uh, it's kind of like a more or less get it done on your own time type thing. So hopefully she doesn't want to take that one because it was a little hard to get to. All right, I'm gonna hop out and see. So let's talk about picking out a Landstar trailer when you go for a drop and hook. There were four total here. One was a Premier trailer. So that just means it doesn't say Landstar down the side, but it is, I guess, leased by Landstar. So it has the Landstar stickers on it, on the front. So the first thing I usually look for <laughs> on these uh, trailers uh, is the, uh, what would it be? Front left inside tire. If it has any sort of waviness to it, that pretty much lets you know that the shocks are gone on it. That's like the first thing. Then the other super important thing that we always look for pretty much first, it's going to be tricky since this trailer's here right in front of it, but uh, we check for the Landstar inspection and uh, the DOT inspection. Okay, so very nice uh, shop guys saw our struggle sent uh, a yard hostler over to move the trailer. They said that wasn't supposed to be dropped there anyway. So they were happy to move it. So like I was saying, the one of the first things that we always look at is the inspections. And this one has a pretty new inspection, 7 of 22, a lot newer, more recent than any of the other trailers here. Yeah. Make sure that kingpin is locked. Let me show y'all what the tires start to look like after a few years. There's our uh, old new trailer. So this one down here, where was the Premier? Yeah, so that Premier trailer right there, see it has the Landstar logo on the front, but it doesn't have any hazmat placard holders. The uh, inspections kind of out at least the Landstar inspections out so this is the trailer that I was looking at and immediately said no not only does it need an inspection but this tire is pretty terrible it's real bad uh, I think that was pretty much the only one I think this one also on the back there gets the same thing hard to see light but yeah, that's our the first preliminary. So is when was the last inspection? How chewed up are the tires? Uh, the insides, I mean, this one's pretty clean, honestly. The others are pretty dirty. Let's see, where was, oh, and then the, the other one that they had here was an older one that looks like it doesn't even have a current dot inspection on it. But it has a Landstar inspection, which I, I, I've heard supposedly it's supposed to go when they do one, they do the other. But 
I guess this one's paperwork or sticker or whatever for the FMCSA sticker is not there. Forgive me if I am jumbling up all my terms because like I understand it, but it still gets kind of confusing. Landstar inspection, DOT inspection, but look at this one. I wanted this trailer really bad just for the fact that all of the tires, all of them, all eight on the back are brand new. I'm assuming recaps, but the wheels are a little rusted, but the tires look nice. But we're gonna go with the 15 that has the most recent inspection and the most decent of the used tires. All right, made it down the road. We are at this truck stop. We got a free spot, one of the like last two or three free spots. There was a bunch of reserve left, but luckily we didn't have to use one. Uh, park next to this guy over here with uh, a half of a house. And uh, yeah, just kind of relaxing. We had some dinner. So the end of this video just kind of pinpoints what I believe is one of the worst parts of Landstar. I know a lot of people complain about the agents and stuff like that, but that's not really a Landstar thing. That's just more of a open load board type problem. And we really don't have that many problems with uh, agents and brokers and whatever you want to say. Um, so I, I would just say that like, if you get into dropping a trailer and hooking up to another one, it's probably, I would say nine times out of 10, the trailer is gonna be absolute trash. Um, the dry vans are completely unmaintained. Most of them are going to be way out of date on the uh, DOT inspection much less the 120 day that Landstar wants them inspected. Uh, but I mean, I get it. it like a independent contractor isn't gonna waste their time sitting, babysitting someone else's trailer, especially if you're not getting paid and nobody's paying for that other than the independent contractor in their time. I think the most you get is $25. If you take a, a Landstar trailer in that needs an inspection, you get a $25 bounty. Um, but if you're in the industry and you've tried to get your truck worked on recently, you know that sometimes there's like up to a day wait or just they tell you no, just straight up no because they don't have enough uh, workers you know, mechanics, they don't have enough people, enough, enough staff, or if somebody's out on a road call, there's nobody inside to work on the truck. So, like, I, I'm i not blaming the other BCOs. I completely understand why they would just pass the buck. As long as it's legal enough to roll and doesn't get you in trouble, you know, a lot of people are just down to, to roll with it, drop it, and then it's somebody else's problem. So I'm not even saying like, all oh, these BCOs shouldn't drop the trailers like that. But uh, a lot of the other companies that have really nice equipment, they have terminals that they actually fix their own trailers or they will send somebody out. Uh, but also the, the recent problem that I'm seeing on a lot of the Facebook groups for Landstar is uh, one, the hold times are getting extremely long to talk to somebody in trailer maintenance or utilization. And then also to get them to approve a, a work order uh, is hours long process. So there's just so much negative, uh, th there's such a bad deal on the end of the person that's trying to do the right thing and taking the trailers in. Um, so I get why people don't, and like I'm not even blaming them, you know, it's whatever. But I think that like I said, the number one problem at Landstar, if I could pick one thing, would be the trailers are absolute trash. Unless you're lucky enough to get one of the new ones and then you hold on to that bad boy until you have an issue that needs to be repaired and Landstar doesn't want to repair it. And then you start doing dropping hooks again. Uh, but I think we're gonna end the video here. 
Uh, thank you for watching, and we will catch you on the next one.